All right, C. Lindelof, graph of sine theta. So what we're going to do is this. Just try, going to try to graph sine theta. So we're going to let f of x equal sine of theta. And all we're going to do is kind of this. First thing I'm going to do is set up some stuff that hopefully we all know. Uh, one thing is that on the Cartesian, we can put this on the Cartesian plane. And hopefully we know that the highest point of sine of theta will be 1 and the lowest will be negative 1. <clears throat> and then all I'm going to do is this. As I graph this sine of theta, I'm going to remember this, that as you graph sine of, sine of theta, what you're going to get is you're going to get, you're going to get theta, the angular value, this is crucial, the angular value, right, the angle, the angular value, and then sine of that value. So what I'm going to do is this, I'm going to look at this thing, I'm going to look at it for 2 pi and say, okay, I'm just looking at the x-axis and say, okay, this is the angular val value 0, this is the angular value pi halves, this is the angular value pi, this is the angular value 3 pi halves, and if you're on the unit circle, you see what I'm doing here, and this is the angular value 2 pi. So this is, what I, this is all I'm going to do here. I'm going to go to my unit circle, which is here, and I'm going to go to 0 degrees. Right? I'm going to go to 0 degrees and say, okay, what is sine of 0? Well, sine of 0 is 0, so I'm just going to go back here and say, okay, I know sine of 0 is 0. I'm going to go back to the circle to pi halves. I'm going to go to pi halves. Here's my pi halves. And sine of pi halves is 1. So that gives me this point here, doesn't it? It gives me pi halves 1. Then I'm going to go to, I'm going to, go to pi. So let's just look at that. So I'm going to go to pi. Whoops, sorry, wrong way. I'm going to go to pi. I'm going to go to pi. Here's pi. And sine of pi is 0 again. So I'm going to Actually, I'm going to graph that in, right? Then I'm going to go back to the unit circle again, 3 pi halves. The sine value is negative. This is a negative 1 down here. It's negative 1, isn't it? So there's my negative 1. I'm going to go back and graph that is negative 1. And if we go back again, we know that sine of 2 pi is 0. And then all I'm going to do is kind of give this a smooth and well-behaved curve, which might look something like this, right? I'm just going to go down like that, I'm going to do this. I wish this was more symmetrical, so you have to forgive my bad handwriting. So there, this is one period of this curve. From here, all I have to do is this. I have to just keep going. I'll say, okay, well, what's sine of 2 pi? Sine of 2 pi is this, right? Then what's sine of, if I add pi halves again, so this is what, I, this is what I've done so far. Let me just show you. So far, what we've done is we've gone around this circle one time, and we're back to here. Now what I'm going to do is just do it all again. And as I go back here, this will be 5 pi halves, and I have the angular value uh, for this is 7 pi halves, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's all I'm going to do. So let me show you what I'm going to do here, because I know these values repeat. So because they repeat, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to 2 pi. I'm going to add pi halves plus 2 pi, which is equal to 5 pi halves, isn't it? 5 pi halves. 5 pi halves is equivalent to, to pi fourths. I'm sorry, pi halves. So that's this value right here. This is what I want to show you. you know, let me just show you this really quick, what's going to happen. It's going to just do this. It's going to repeat itself over and over again. So it's going to do this. Pretend that this is all symmetrical, but and this goes like this. So what's the value? What's the value here? Well, if this, if one period is 2 pi, then the second period is 2 pi more than that, which is 4 pi, isn't it? And then this would be 7 pi halves, wouldn't it? Um, right? This would be 2 pi plus this would be 5 pi halves, right? 5 pi halves plus pi halves is 6 pi halves, isn't it? Otherwise known as 3 pi. That makes sense. This is 3 pi. So check this out for a second. If I go from any of these markers, let me give you something really good. If I go from any of these markers, if I go from this marker, check this out. If I go from this marker right here to its repeating value here in green, that's going to be 2 pi in between them, right? We have this point right here. Let's look at this one. Its repeating value is this one right here, isn't it? Well, what's the distance between pi and 3 pi? 2 pi, isn't it? 
So that's what we're going to find, is that we just keep taking our angular values and adding 2 pi. That gives us this theorem right here, this periodic properties. That's what makes this thing so easy to do, is that we know that sine of theta, that angular value, plus 2 pi, is the same as sine of theta. And that's really, really helpful. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Um, let me actually just fill in some values here that we got. We got this was that, wasn't it? This was pi 1. This was 3 pi halves, 3 pi halves, negative 1. And this was 2 pi 0, wasn't it? So, look, I hope this was helpful. This is not too bad. I'm going to do, next I'm going to do the one for cosine, and we'll work through that one together. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Uh, and if you uh, haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. Thanks.